Vladimir, it's great to have you joining us here today. Um, to start for the audience, it would be great if you could give us a background on your professional journey and the work that you're doing at Cisco with the Global Infrastructure Fund. Thank you. So my name is uh, Vladimir Sazonov. I'm part of the Cisco's uh, Global Infrastructure Funds team. We are part of Cisco Corporate Finance, and we're looking for the ways how we can use capital to help our customers and partners grow faster and achieve their business objectives. Excellent. And one of the big things that we hear from different enterprises are thinking about how do we build and get the biggest return on our AI investments is a lot of this build versus buy conversation and do I partner with a data center provider or a cloud company? How do you think through this when you're working with an enterprise client? Yeah. I'll maybe take a step back and first of all kind of a comment that what we see with the AI technology solution the applications, it's a, it's a it's a groundbreaking. It's a transformational for the enterprise customers. And then the different industries, customers evaluate what they can do, see the opportunity for them, quantify opportunity for them, and they say, hey, these applications make sense for me in this and this area. It could be new revenue generation, it could be better customer services processes, it could be cost savings initiatives. And when they see this opportunity, they immediately make a decision, okay, how do I do this? How do I build it? How do I own it? How do I manage this? And uh, while I think this, the technology is, is groundbreaking and new and changes literally every week, I think the way enterprise customers evaluate buying decisions doesn't change. They still look at the, at the fundamentals. Is that a core for me or a context? Or what is a core? Is applications for me is a core? Or owning that um, technology stack for me is a core? Or managing the whole vertical asset for me is a core? What is a core? What is a context? What is the cost to put it all in production? operate, manage, and uh, build, maintain application, or maybe develop the own application. Complexity. Which of these elements is important for me? How complex they are? Do I have a talent for this? Yeah. So I think, uh, and those parameters doesn't really change. Enterprise customers evaluating every opportunity and investment the same way. So they will look at AI and say, here's tremendous opportunity. Do I build it? If I have a solid case, they will build it and own it. If, if they say, hey, for me it's important the application it delivers whatever, healthcare data analysis or, or, or innovation research and development, healthcare medicine. But actually owning the, let's say, servers, networking equipment, the data centers is not, is not my core, it's a context. So I will, I, will, I will, they will look for the ways for somebody else to build it and operate and manage for them. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense. Um, as you think about uh, business leaders trying to think through this approach of core versus context, how should they really evaluate and make the decision on, is this a core competency that I need to own versus is this something that I can start to outsource? I think for the enterprise customer, from any, from any business, generally speaking, what's differentiating them on the market? Yeah. What's differentiating them from competitor? Is that their application? They, they process maybe some innovative offer or service mm. or ability to do the same thing like competitor does, but much faster than maybe they optimize the technology stack. Yeah? We, we, we see even in a, in a consumer applications today, that companies compete on, a, on a how good their LLM model is. Yeah? It's also a business, yeah. right? So then companies who is doing LLM models, they optimize not only software layer, but also the hardware layer, where I can find the fastest uh, hardware to run my, to, to train my model and to develop my model. Companies in, let's say, banking industry would be focused on uh, an analysis of their data. Their data and anal analytics out of the data is, is the core, is a differentiating factor. Mm. In which data center is run, it's probably less critical. What will be critical for them, security perimeter. They will say, I, I want to have somebody build that stack for me, manage it for me, but I will need to have a security framework which fits into mine. So there is a, in my example of a banking, finance customer, there will be integration of the customers looking on the security aspects, how the AI application runs. Yep. And you know, we talked about a, a variety of things in terms of control, security, cost. As you think about deployment options for um, all of these different applications, um, can you kind of give us your overview of what are the right types of workloads and what are the primary metrics you should be looking for to differentiate between this workload makes sense for me to be on a public cloud, this one maybe in a private environment or an on-prem. I think, I think again, um, it's economics, right? Yeah. So if, if enterprise customer knows what kind of uh, workload they have, yeah. that workload have a predictable consumption pattern or predictable workload pattern, 
it will require that much compute capacity or whatever else is required, mm -hmm. sustainable, yeah? There may be a case to buy and own the whole stack to operate it and operate it in-house. It's a capex to invest and own, it's operational expense to maintain and support technology stack, yep. it's, a, it's expense to operate the software stack on top of it. Enterprise may decide, I know, I understand the whole thing, I have a people to manage the whole stack, it's maybe the cost, most cost-efficient way. There may be applications with the variable workloads. And they will say, you know what, I will focus my application, but actually compute capacity behind it. I would like to rent it from somebody else on demand. And then there is like a choice of clouds. Clouds, uh, obviously hyperscalers on one end, uh, local, we'll say color-based clouds on the other end. And then the enterprise will look, okay, how much their variability expected. Let's say in today's world, typically web frontends yeah, are based on the hyperscalers because of the global presence, ability to momentarily scale the, scale the capacity of the application. Maybe the application they're looking for is not that volatile. The whole, maybe a lot of back office application processing data at bunch at night, let's say. Yeah? They don't need to be in hyperscaler. They need to be close to the, to the data. Yeah? The data gravity, we believe, is going to be a big factor to that. Yeah? Enterprise will look, where is my data? Okay, I need to have a I need to have an AI process next to my data. Yeah. That's, I think, the factors which will push enterprise decision makers to see what do I want to own, what do I want to outsource, and how much to outsource, how much I want to have a managed service for me. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things you mentioned when you were talking about building your own data centers, um, we frequently hear about the enormous amount of CapEx that is going to be invested into AI data centers and delivering all the benefits of accelerated compute. Um, how is Cisco helping really deliver CapEx and unlock um, the amount of investment needed in this space? Yeah, well, if customer decided to buy and build a stack of technology, we obviously are very happy to deliver that technology and support customer with the financing if necessary. What we see today at this point of time, uh, there is a massive demand from enterprise customers not to own technology, but to have technology delivered to them as a service. Mm. Which means then for the cloud service providers, like Nscale, there is a inherent CapEx requirements to put the technology up front and then rent it to the customer for the maybe several years. That's a piece of a puzzle which we can address as well. Mm. We can help uh, cloud service providers with the funding and financing models uh, to build the digital infrastructure for their enterprise projects. There a, we have a choice of a different solution from debt financing to equity financing, project-based revenue share. We have a kind of a spectrum of the options. Cool. And I think, you know, one last thing, we did talk about kind of the emerging set of cloud providers. Um, historically, enterprises have really considered only like the biggest, most established players. You know, how do you see the market evolving and, and why should enterprises be potentially working with some of the new, the new players in the space? Um, I would disagree that enterprises only were looking at, at largest clouds. I think what enterprise customers will look like, will look at, is a often very customized set of technologies. Mm. And, if, and, and ultimately they, they, they need the technology, but they really care the value could be uh, the core, is application yeah. running on top of it. So enterprise, enterprise customers say, I would like to have somebody else to take care of this technology. That's what we at Cisco call managed service provider. And we believe that business was around for the last 20 years and it's coming into the future as well with a, with a, with a new high performance compute solutions. The technology again, fundamentally, transformatively different, but the business model stayed the same. There will be companies who will say, hey, I can deliver the whole technology for you and manage technology complexity because the people are not ready. Actually, last month Cisco has published um, AI readiness report which is a survey of 8,000 business decision makers for the company's 500 employees and above. And what, what those decision makers said, they said 80% of them have uh, AI developments as part of the corporate strategy, mm -hmm. as a way to compete, as a way to compete and advance forward their business opportunities. 46% of those say, our infrastructure is just not there. We are not ready to accommodate new high performance compute. 77% of those said, our data is all over the place. It needs to be looked at, aggregated, so we can leverage our data for our AI purposes. Mm -hmm. And 70% of those said, we have no people to do this. So it just shows that demand is there, but capacity for the enterprise customers to do it themselves is not there. 
So if and if they're looking to get ahead on AI game within a year or two, they will not get the infrastructure in place. They will not get people in place in current environment. Mm -hmm. I think the opportunity for the managed services providers in this space right now is enormous. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's it's very exciting because we're very much at an inflection point where the market is going to change so much over the next three years that the people who are not building and winning today, they're going to just be left behind in the future. And so the more people we talk to, the more you get this sense of urgency that we need to do something today and we need the partners that can help us execute because we have a certain level of expertise. There's all these new things that have emerged recently that we don't have the right people or the right technology in house for. Very much so, with you on this. Uh, look, I really appreciate you coming in today and sharing your expertise with the audience. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your day and look forward to talking again. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Cool.